go to Luke 2.49. Luke 2.49. Okay, where are we at here? 49. Jesus said, why were you searching for me? This is when he's in the temple, when the, his mom and dad come and get him. His uh, Mary and Joseph came and he was in the temple. He stayed behind in Jerusalem when he was 12 years old. He said, why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Okay, listen to that. Okay, let's go to Luke Chapter 2, verse 49. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Did you not know, or wist ye not know, that I must be about my father's business? Okay, does that sound a bit different? Did you, didn't you not know that I had to be in my father's house? I must be about my father's business. That's way... That's really why he was there. He wasn't there just to hang out in the temple. Okay, let's go on from there. And by the way, that's gone in 38 versions. Other versions, it's totally gone. There's not even italicses or brackets there. Okay, let's go to John 3.13. John 3.13. Hope I'm not boring you too much here, but this is important stuff to look at, right? 3.13, no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Okay. Now let's go to John and King James 3.13. I can check this out now. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Okay? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Okay? Which is in heaven is the word that's gone. That's, that sentence is gone. I think that just emphasizes more that Jesus is from heaven. And it's, that's gone. It's not real serious, but it's an emphasis that's taken away in the NIV. Here we go again. Okay, let's go on now. Acts 2.30. Let's go to Acts 2.30. 2 chapter 30. Okay, verse 30. Sorry, chapter 2, verse 30. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Okay, this is, this is, um, who is this? A Peter preaching here. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. This is talking about David, okay? Okay, now let's go to Acts 2.29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Okay, verse 30. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn, that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Christ is gone in here. It's not even in here. Check out your verse 30. It's not even there. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath, this is talking about David, that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Why did he take out Christ? And according to the flesh, that's also gone. Even though that kind of connects with already that he's a descendant. But what's mainly gone is Christ to sit on his throne. Christ is gone. What is that, what is that gone? What are they doing? Why are they taking that out of there? Okay, 1 Corinthians 6.20. Two more verses here for part one here. 1 Corinthians 6.20. Uh, where are we at? 1 Corinthians 6.20. You were... Okay. Do you not know, verse 19, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, 
whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Yeah, that's a good verse. Honor God with your body. Awesome. Okay. Now, look at what it says here now. 1 Corinthians 6. Six nineteen, six twenty, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay? Look at that. What happened to the NIV? It disappeared again. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore honor God with your body. Okay, that's nice and true. But look at this. For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. That's important. Your spirit and your body is God's property. It's not even there. So anyway, that's gone again. Now let's go for the last one. That's gone in 38 other versions. 38 other Bible versions that's gone. And don't even bother, don't even bother trying to get any kind of real translation from the Message Bible. Because really, it's really goofed up. And be careful very much of the um, the gender-neutral Bible. Uh, it's a gender-neutral NIV. Uh, they're changing things from he to she and this kind of stuff. Be careful. Be careful of that. That's uh, a problem. Um, it's not to be politically correct, guys. It is to be politically wrong. It's to be And it's to be biblically wrong. You're biblically wrong to put that in there. That's biblically wrong. I'm not against women. But women have their place in the scriptures, and God never meant that to be changed into he and she and into all this make it, making it feminine. That's not what he that he never intended that. Okay, you can study the Hebrew and the Greek all you want; you weren't going to find that in there. So God has a place for men and women. He's given them a place. He's created them for a place, a good place, both of them. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is the last verse. Chapter 15, hang on to your boots. We'll keep going here. Verse 47. Verse 47, where are we at here? Okay, verse 47. The first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man from heaven. Okay. Let's go to King James. Okay, let's read it again. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man from heaven. Okay, that's 1 Corinthians. That's verse 47 of chapter 15. Okay, 1547, and King James says, The first man is of the earth, earthly, which is good. The second man is the Lord from heaven. The Lord. There is no Lord here. No Lord. What's going on? Why is that gone? Why would you take or even not put that in there? The Lord from heaven. Anyway, that's all I can say for now. Um, please come back on part two if you like. And there's even more. Uh, these scriptures, I'm only beginning. The next ten, it gets even more stranger. Um, I want to show you some of this stuff. And then you can decide what you want to do. I'm not telling you what Bible version you have to read, you guys. But really, just at least least consider there's something going on here. Why are these twisted? Why are these, I, would, I call them twisted. Why, why are they taken out? Why are they changed? I don't know.